My name is Chris Littlewood. I'm a physiotherapist and a senior research fellow at the University of Sheffield. I've spent um, approximately 20 years working as a physiotherapist now across the NHS and the private sector. But in 2011, I was very fortunate to be awarded a, a fellowship from the Department of Health to undertake a PhD in relation to the assessment and the management of rotator cuff tendinopathy. And that's my area of interest. Well, for a number of reasons, but one, one thing that's become apparent to me in my time as a physiotherapist is that our understanding has progressed. Our uncertainty has progressed as well. But um, if we don't have research, then practice continues based upon our own bias, our own preference, whereas research gives us an opportunity to think about things in a different way, advance our knowledge, and ultimately improve clinical outcomes for patients. Can physiotherapy help with shoulder pain? The short answer is yes. Um, what we don't know is how, how much physiotherapy can help, but if we look, for example, in comparison to surgery for shoulder pain, then physiotherapy is at least as effective as a more invasive, more expensive intervention. In comparison to, for example, injection therapy, Physiotherapy is at least as effective in the short term, possibly more effective in the mid to longer term. So what we are seeing now from research is quite a clear steer that there are some promising interventions, exercise as a component of physiotherapy being one of the most promising interventions. And the steer suggests that if we get our exercise prescription right and we help our patients adhere to the program, then indeed physiotherapy can help shoulder pain. We've grown up in physiotherapy with lots of assumptions about what clinical tests mean, what imaging can offer, what an expert versus a novice can offer, for example. But of course, assessment is vital. Whether we can unpick our patients' problems to the minutiae that we thought we could, that's debatable. But certainly, a thorough assessment where we get to understand our patient principally where we come up with a working hypothesis upon which we can base treatment uh, is vital. And of course, clinical reasoning um, should in underpin everything that we do. Even though there's a great deal of uncertainty in our profession around what our interventions offer, and a great deal of uncertainty about what the assessment is actually unpicking, we should at least be developing useful theories that we subject to evaluation um, that we base our interventions on and I think most critically for me is theories that are open to discussion, open to debate and open to change if new data becomes available. If I was advising someone about how to develop as a physiotherapist in this clinical area um, I would say be confident in what a physiotherapist can offer to begin with. If we look at the evidence and we deliver physiotherapy well, it is an evidence-based intervention that is at least as good as the other interventions out there. We don't need to regard our intervention as inferior. But the one thing that uh, young physiotherapists, well no, all physiotherapists need to bear in mind is that there's a great deal of uncertainty and to ask people, no matter who they are, what their background, what their CV says, to ask those patients, why do you do that? Why do you believe that? Is a really excellent way of progressing. Be critical. Ask questions of um, treatment approaches that people might say are effective, are the gold standard. Be, be true and be open to the idea that Lots of what we do is based upon personal bias, our own personal history. Be confident to ask why, be critical, um, and as always, read, listen to both experts, but I guess most importantly, listen to your patients. And again, it's, it's a really interesting question because what we see in the literature is that people are reporting a whole range of good clinical outcomes with a variety of different exercises. So is one approach at the moment suggesting it's superior than another? Probably not. What seems to be the key feature is that we uh, help our patients to engage with exercise on a regular basis and that that exercise is progressive over time. 
There are two issues that jump out to me there. The first one, if I was to say no, that would imply that I didn't trust you. Or secondly, it would imply that what I'm offering is superior to what someone else is offering. And I've got no reason to not trust uh, another physiotherapist. But importantly, I think we need to think about this constructively. So think about assessment as we do uh, effectiveness of interventions. We're on a journey towards identifying effective interventions for our patients. It's the same for assessment. We've got a whole range of different techniques or tests or scans that we could employ. And in truth, we don't know the best tests, the best combination of tests, how we can use that to inform a diagnosis or a classification, and then how we can maybe develop a specific treatment program that improves outcomes. There's again, lots of uncertainty. And nobody has nailed the idea of assessment just now. So in response to your question, would I let you assess my shoulder? I would. I guess I might be a little bit more critical than your typical patient because I'd be asking, why are you doing that test? What information will it offer you above the information that we've already talked about? In relation to scanning, it's similar. We're seeing um, a movement up towards an increased volume of scanning within routine physiotherapy. And I, I can imagine a scenario where if I came to you and I said, I've got a problem with my shoulder, I fell six weeks ago, it was pretty painful to begin with, but now it's settled down, but I've got this weakness, an incredible weakness, and it doesn't seem to be improving. I can imagine that that would be a good opportunity to use a scan for someone, maybe to identify a relevant cuff tear, for example. But in relation to me coming along to you saying I've had pain for six weeks, it doesn't seem to be shifting, it fits a typical pattern, it hurts when I move it, it's easier when I rest, I'd be asking you, well, what does that scan actually offer you? What does it tell you about my shoulder pain and how will it change the treatment pathway or tell me whether I'm going to get better or not? And I think you'd struggle answering those questions. And in relation to, would I let you inject my shoulder? I can imagine a scenario where if I came to you and my primary problem was pain and I was wanting just some short-term relief, then an injection of local anaesthetic might be justifiable. But if you're talking about injecting me with a corticosteroid, I'd be asking you, well, what are the comparative effects of this injection? What, what are the, the longer-term outcomes? Are there any consequences? And I think my challenge would be, I'm not sure that you could reassure me adequately in relation to that.